Masig is one of the islands in the Torres Strait, lying between Queensland and Papua New Guinea, and this is Yessi Mosby's home. It's more than an island to me and my people. It's our maternity ward, it's our hospital, it's our school, it's our library. But Yessi has witnessed the waters rise year on year. The sea, sea line here wasn't here before. It was out there. He has watched food sources disappear, birds change patterns, and even ancestral remains destroyed. Me and my children, 2018, was walking on the beach and picking up our ancestral remains like shells off the beach. In 2019, he and seven other Torres Strait Islander leaders, known as the Torres Strait Eight, took the former Australian government to the UN, claiming climate change in action was violating their human rights. They allege policies around reducing greenhouse gas emissions, as well as efforts to address coastal rises in the Torres Strait, were insufficient. Three years on, the Human Rights Committee delivered its verdict. The former government's failure to adequately protect them from climate change had violated their right to culture and to live free of interference. I, I shed tears of joy. The door has been opened. For so long, we felt like we were neglected. I know my ancestors are rejoicing. In its decision, the UN Committee called on Australia to compensate Torres Strait Islanders for the harm caused to their physical and spiritual home, saying the government should do more to address the impacts of climate change there. Soon after the change in government, the Prime Minister, as well as the Ministers for Indigenous Australians and Climate Change, met with elders about the impacts of the changing climate. We want the government to come and sit so we can talk straight to the head. You know, we really don't want no band-aid solution. We want something that it'll, it will work and it will be beneficial for our people. 